Hi, Chargers. For Honors Biology to finish up the bean seed germination lab, once we gather our data, you're going to be completing your table and then finally presenting your data in a graph. And we want to keep in mind that independent variable and the dependent variable. And so remember that the independent variable was the one thing we changed. Remember when we set this up, we had everything the same, the same, the same. So I had you use the same baggie, the same paper towels, you folded the paper towels the same way, put them in the bag, you put a certain number of seeds, uh, they all came, those seeds all came from the same bag, they were all pinto beans, and, um, and then we finally changed one thing. And so as we looked at that one thing we changed, as we used a different type of liquid, um, <clears throat> a cleaner, we use different dilutions of that cleaner. So we were kind of trying to see, does it grow, do, do seeds germinate better in water? Or would they grow better in some type of cleaner that has a chemical in it? Hopefully you've taken a little time to look up that chemical and to see if there is something unique about that chemical that maybe plants even uh, would, would thrive in and would help the seeds germinate. So um, look at the second page be sure that you filled in the independent variable. Today we're doing the dependent variable. We're looking for the seeds that germinate and we're going to count those and record those in the table that's on page three. But then remember that you need to have a hypothesis. And for those of you that were in testing on Thursday, uh, you missed this. And so um, when you go back and you think about a hypothesis, I just want to remind you that we do hypotheses every day. So when my furnace wouldn't come on this weekend and I had to start to problem solve what might be wrong with my furnace. Um, I had one hypothesis after another and I think my final um, analysis was that I probably should call a professional to come look at it um, because it was beyond uh, and uh, what I knew and seemed a little dangerous. So, um, so hypotheses had led me to that uh, determination. A good way to start a hypothesis it's maybe just to think in your head, I think. And then put down what you think. It's really a statement, just a single statement, uh, as to what you think uh, will have the best outcome. And so uh, perhaps you think it would be the cleaner. Perhaps you have a certain dilution you think would do better than others. And so uh, think about that as you write your hypothesis. Be sure you filled in your independent variable, your D dependent variable and your controlled variables. But then remember, we're trying to compare what we got to the controls. So definitely, the, um, the group that had no independent variable, had no cleaner, is the water. But we could maybe also think of the 100% cleaner as another control or perhaps you want to include that as part of your independent variable. That's up to you. Um, either way, we're going to look at all five of those bags today and take a look at which seeds have germinated. And then once it's time to record them in a table, I just want to go over with you the appropriate way to present your data in a table. First of all, your independent variable should be listed, and I'm going to use ID for independent variable. Those should be listed going down vertically, and so that each row starts out with an independent variable. Now, I didn't make enough rows there, but that's okay. Um, and so we list the independent variables here. Um, try to put them into maybe some kind of order that makes sense to you. Um, and to the reader, we're always trying to present our data to the reader um, for uh, them to understand. And then our dependent variables go up here. And so anything that we can do as a dependent variable, um, perhaps even getting to some math at the end, like an average or um, some other uh, um, calculation to condense our data so that it's not just raw data, but it has becomes more meaningful. Uh, as you get older, um, and actually a little bit later this year, if we, if we do the fruit fly experiment, 
um, we do something called chi-square. And chi-square helps to make our data more meaningful instead of just saying uh, this number and that number and letting the reader figure out what that means. Um, we can make our data more meaningful by doing statistical tests. So the dependent variables will read across. So for each independent variable, you're going to look at the results going from left to right. And that seems to kind of make the most sense. If you've ever seen a table that's been flipped, you might notice like, ooh, that doesn't look quite right. And you have to sit there and let, kind of look at it for a minute to see if it, it makes some sense. But really what's important as you use any kind of table or figure, I'm sorry, if you use any type of table or figure, we're going to um, need to put a title. And so we're going to label this as table one. Talking about a title, I labeled it as title, but um, table one, and then we're going to write our title. And in that title, I should see both the independent variable and the dependent variable. So remember our independent variables looking at that cleaner, dilutions of the cleaner, and then our dependent variable was trying to count those seeds that had germinated. So think about that as you write your, your uh, uh, title. It's probably going to be pretty wordy. It's going to look pretty wordy to you, but it's going to mean so much more than just seeing a title like bean seed or germination because that doesn't really tell us very much. So you want to inform your reader of what they're looking at in the table before you, um, before you get finished with that table. Then we're going to take that data and try to condense it. We'll, we'll do an average, um, a class average. And so um, we will be then graphing our data. And when we're graphing our data, there are two types of graphs that we're going to focus on this year. There are more types of graphs uh, depending on what you're trying to show. Um, you learn that in math, you'll learn that in some of your physical sciences. But right now I would just like us to concentrate on two. And that is the line graph and the bar graph. When we look at a line graph, um, there are uh, reasons to do a line graph, but this is when we collect data over time. That means it's continuous data. In other words, we would have had to have looked at these bags multiple times while the seeds were germinating in order to collect data. So we would have looked at day one, day two, day three, day four, and so that we could use the x-axis for time. We're going to learn that the independent variable goes on the x-axis and time can be the independent variable. The bar graph is for discontinuous data. In other words, we start at the beginning, we come up with one result at the end, that's discontinuous data. Today we're going to be using a bar graph for this data. There are some variations of each of these that you'll learn uh, throughout high school. You'll learn when to use a best fit line. You'll learn when to connect the dots. You may use a histogram, maybe a pie chart. There are various uh, variations of the bar graph showing that discontinuous data. When you use a, a graph, the graph is a figure, so you're going to label this figure one on your paper. And again, you're going to give me a title. You're going to give me a title that describes what I'm seeing in the graph. Um, and so a graph or a table, they don't stand alone. You have to put a title. So think about your independent variable and your dependent variable and what it is that you're showing with those. If we're showing your individual and class averages, then you're going to have to indicate that in the title. You may also need a key to indicate 
your independent variable. So if you're using time, especially down here, you're definitely going to have to use a key to show your independent variable that you chose. But since we have um, uh, both individual and class average data, we're going to have to be, a, be able to put that into a key and to use uh, two different looks to those bars. So maybe one would be filled in, maybe one wouldn't be filled in, or maybe it has um, some kind of cross marks on it. Our dependent variable is going to go on the y-axis. It's good to spread your, um, your dependent variable and your independent variable over your whole graph and not just make your graph this big within a whole graph paper. So think about what your, how your dependent variable needs to be numbered. If it only needs to be numbered to 10 and you've got plenty of space, then skip every other one. Because remember, if we have an average, you may have something that is not a whole number and you'd need to go in between some numbers. So that might be a good idea. Be sure to tell me what those numbers stand for. You can't just put dependent variable over there. You're going to have to put what these are, what these numbers represent. So go back to look at what your dependent variable is. On the independent variable, you too need to label that. What are these things that we see down here? And then you can space them out. You may wish to start with your control group and do your control groups first. So maybe water and maybe the 100% cleaner. We can just say the cleaner, whatever name that is. And then you can start your dilution. For each of those, we're going to wind up with two bars. And that's where this key is important. So if one is to be blackened in, then you'll have to blacken it in. Since we don't have colored pencils available in the classroom, you could use them at home, though, if you've got them at home. And then you can use something like cash marks, if you wish, to uh, show the class average. You can also put the number above it. Not sure how I got 1.5, but don't worry about that. And then this is just an example. And then uh, put the class average. You can put the number above it to make it clear. Uh, particularly if it's zero, that's always a good idea because it's difficult to, of course, see zero. But you're going to have to make something if um, if it's zero. Okay, make a small bar. When you're finished with that, be sure everything is labeled. That you don't don't use IV and DV. You have to tell me what those are and what these numbers stand for. And then be sure that you fill in your key. And then you're going to write a conclusion after that. Your conclusion should look back at your data, look back at your graph, look back at your table, and decide, are you going to support the hypothesis that you made? Is there a difference between those? Is there no difference between them? Do you support or reject your hypothesis? Then it's always appropriate to talk about how could you make it different? How could you, um, what weaknesses were there that you could make better in another experiment? So complete the conclusion and then you can take photographs of your lab and submit that on Classroom. Have a good day, Chargers.